Oh, sorry. Sorry, Darren, I just muted you. All right, um, hey, thanks everyone for joining and thanks for those who joined early and just kind of hung out with us. Uh, really appreciate it. I'm Roxanne, I'm uh, the moderator for today's meeting. Uh, we're starting basically just a little bit after 11 and uh, we're gonna go through a few of the topics, but at this point, um, we're gonna look at the agenda. So uh, I wanted to go through a couple of Zoom tips. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, um, I, and I think you guys on the call have actually seen it already, but you'll, you'll be able to unmute yourself. So I, I enabled that you can unmute yourself if you uh, want to interject or want to ask questions. Um, so you'll be able to do that. If uh, anybody needs instructions, can you, can you raise your hand? Because I can see everybody online. There is an unmute function that is on your Zoom control panel, um, and it should be near your name. So uh, if you have any, any questions, you can, um, you can you know, let us know. Um, uh, if you can't unmute or you have issues, there's another function called chat, and there's a chat window on your Zoom. Let me see if I can share my full screen. So you can see my full screen now? Mm -hmm. All right, so in my Zoom um, panel, I have a function called chat. What you wanna do is just click on chat. Let me just move our, my picture over. Um, just click on chat and you can start chat or you can basically uh, uh, write a chat to everybody. So um, start a new chat. And you can just type in your messages on the chat here. All right. Um, if, if all else fails, uh, just uh, let us know uh, via email or I think Darren uh, will we'll keep monitoring. And when Darren's talking, I'll take a look at the email. But other than that, I think uh, we should be set to go. So those are my Zoom tips for today. Um, with that, I'm going to take it, turn it over to Darren um, and have him uh, go through the next part of our session. Let me go back over to the right screen. All right. Great. Thanks, Roxy. Great job. Thanks. So, hey, welcome everyone to our first meeting of 2020. So, uh, boy, it's been a year that uh, has uh, topped all years, I guess is the easiest way to say that. But I'm glad we can all get together, see each other's faces, and uh, connect. And we're looking to hopefully do this uh, going forward until we can actually get back together and have uh, physical meetings, which would be great. Okay. So with that, we'll go ahead and start our next uh, part of the meeting here. There we go. So I uh, just want to give a quick refresher of our uh, executive board and who we got um, running the society, just in case you forgot all of our lovely faces and who's who. So I'm the president, good old Darren Hibiscus Kingpin. Uh, Alex is our uh, vice president. Um, definitely has a really cool virtual background going on there. Good job, Alex. Like the creativity. Uh, that's why it's such a good landscaper. Uh, George is our treasurer, George Crochet, and um, uh, George, I don't think, was able to join us today. Hopefully, he will. And uh, Ernie is our uh, board of directors, head of board of directors. Um, we all know his lovely yard over in Tustin. Um, he informed me this morning that he bought eight more hibiscus plants with the update, so he's pushing like 400 now, which is just really hot. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's pretty funny. And, and Roxanne uh, Torney, she's our marketing slash strategy consultant and does everything behind the scenes to make our society not just function, but function greatly. And we can do things like today. So Roxanne, thank you so much for all the hard work and great ideas and the expertise. Uh, I, we couldn't do it without you. So that's our board. We say hi. We're glad to get you guys. Uh, faces up and we can uh, do some uh, fun things this year which we're going to talk about real shortly all right 
So first thing I'm going to talk about real quickly is just give you a quick uh, update on our finances. Um, as of this morning, we have a balance in our checking account of $3,194. So we're doing well. We're actually still selling plants. And that's been a nice thing that we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing in just a few weeks that you can participate in and uh, some pretty cool stuff coming up. So we do have uh, one more payment we're due to the nursery over in Tustin that we're housing uh, a lot of our cuttings that are growing there. And we've already made several payments to them. So they've been really great. We only have to pay, I think, two twenty-five dollars a plant to house them there. Um, and that's like a semi-annual payment we make per plant. And they water them, they feed them, they move them around as the plants need be. So it's been a great uh success as far as that goes and it's really close to Alex's home so he's able to go over there and check up on things and make sure the progress is good and and that's really been great so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a teeny bit about the plants so some exciting stuff next up is our meetings so with the coronavirus um, looks like it's starting to do its second round um, and really starting to spread again so we might be doing some more of the virtual meetings um, going forward I would think probably for most of the remainder of the year. So if this works out well today, we'll just keep on plugging away at it and try to get more members to uh, join us. And we'll keep things going and we'll try to sneak in some events like we'll talk about later about the plant sale and other things like that. Um, so hopefully we can kind of find a balance that works, but keep the momentum going, which is the key thing for us in 2020 is get that momentum. Um, Gosh knows we sure have a, a lot of time on our hands to be in our gardens and take extra good care of your hibiscus, right? They're all doing so fantastic now because we're all over them every minute of every day, right? <laughs> okay, so with that, let's talk about our upcoming initiatives that we have um, for this year. The first thing, and this is something we've been working on for a lot of years, and I want to thank Alex for really helping out with this because without him, I don't think this would have happened, but... Uh, we have all of our plants ready now to distribute to our members who have paid since 2014 through 19. So what we've done, and we'll talk about this in just a teeny bit, is we have selected plants for each year that those members will be getting. If they already have that plant, we have some substitutes in the wings that we can use that um, the members are going to get. So that is really exciting news. Um, just another reason to, to become a dues-paying member and help support the society. and that is really important for us to uh, continue to thrive going forward. Uh, the next thing we're gonna be having coming up, and this is gonna be on July 11th, is we're gonna actually have a hibiscus plant sale, and it's gonna be at the nursery I was talking about just a few minutes ago. Uh, Alex and I, uh, we're working hard to get all these uh, plants rooted and grown well and, and looking great. So we're gonna have a really tremendous plant sale. So this is a not to miss event. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about this coming up, but this will be the first of hopefully maybe uh, several sales that we're going to be doing over the next six months to a year. Uh, and the last thing, and this is another real th uh, exciting thing that we got brewing, is um, Roxanne and Bill are both working on getting us some uh, special hibiscus artwork and merchandise. And Roxanne, if you want to talk real quickly about what you got going on, or Bill, feel free to hop in. Uh, yeah, we're working out, we're working with a, an artist that we um, have identified and uh, we're looking at maybe having some uh, custom uh, selections that he would um, create artwork around and we would use that as uh, the basis for some merchandise. Um, and so Bill and I are working together to kind of iron out the details, but I think it will be really exciting and um, yeah, a great way for us to continuously enjoy uh, hibiscus and even have it decorate our, our walls or, you know, things that we use. So more cool. to come on that. Awesome. And what we'll do is, and this ties into our next talking point here about, um, we're going to do some surveys and we're going to send them out to everyone electronically and uh, just kind of get feedback on what things you like, what things you don't like, and what things we could do more of and improve upon. And one of that will be the merchandise. I'll definitely see if anyone has any things that they would love to get, and maybe that'll help guide us in what direction and what exact products might be more uh, wanted by our members. And uh, we'll get feedback on that too. But I'm really excited about the merchandise. We've been talking about this since we opened up the society. 
And I mean, you think about it, the, the sky's the limit with all the possibilities with high discus and what you can do for merchandise from shirts to all kinds of really exciting things that you can have around your house, uh, in your car, um, bribe people with. It's great. So we got lots of cool stuff in the wings and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that off the ground and going too. So good job, Bill and Roxanne. Thank you so much. All right, moving on to the next slide. So we're going to take a quick tour of our Hibiscus Society website. We've worked really hard the last couple of years to, to redo the whole website and make it just a fantastic place for you to answer a lot of your Hibiscus questions and concerns. And that is, uh, I think, um, just it takes away having to wait to a meeting or trying to contact an expert and get help when your plant's not doing well and you need to get going right away on something. So we've built in like almost a virtual expert for you to access. So we're gonna take a quick tour of our website and you get to see uh, what we've got and how you should be checking out every now and then. Okay, so this is our home screen. So when you first log on to our website, um, it's gonna have on the left side the most current event that's coming up. So if you ever want to get a quick uh, snapshot of what's happening with the society, that's your place to go. Just uh, go to the main webpage here. Um, got a little quick uh, drool factor hibiscus gallery go on there and a little welcome message from me. And if you want to scroll down, Roxy, here, here we go. Just some more information uh, just for people that might be interested in joining and a little blurb about uh, Hidden Valley Hibiscus uh, member. They're the ones that helped start the society back in 2014. And, and even though Charles and Cindy are so busy, they have a hard time making most of the meetings. Uh, they're always asking about what's going on, how they can help, and what they can do behind the scenes to promote the society. Um, so we're always uh, interacting with them constantly. All right. So moving on from here, we're going to hit the welcome page. And this is just basically a nice little welcome to let people know who I am, who we are what we're about and what we do. And uh, one thing uh, we've tried to do on the website is, is we throw a lot of drool factor hibiscus photos in there because we want people that maybe aren't aware of exotic hibiscus and what's been done over the last 10 to 15 years to get a good sense of the possibilities. So, and that kind of picks up some dry content too, which is always good. So if you ever uh, have the need to drool or have um, major pains of wanting stuff, this is a good place to go. Um, if people need to know what you need, want for your Christmas list, this is also the place to send them so they can get some ideas. Ha, ha, ha. All right, moving on. So next part of our website is going to be the about website part. So we have two sections here. We have our leadership, and that's just our leadership team that we have in place here at the Society, which I went over at the beginning of the meeting. And we also, there we go. And we also have our uh, Hibiscus Societies, which is a really a cool page. So this is a place where we've put in um, information about all the different societies, not just here in America, but also throughout the world. So pretty cool stuff. Um, hey, there's our founding members, yay. So lots of fun little facts and tidbits about the society here for you and new members and someone that might be interested in joining, they can learn more about us. There's our society listing. So we have the AHS and we also have international groups as well. If you have a family or friends that live in other countries, like for instance, Melu has a lot of contacts in the Philippines, uh, there's societies out there, people that do stuff. So we want that to spread. We want to grow the hibiscus world as much as we can. And this is just a, a good way for us to do that. All right. Our next section is our calendar. Normally this is filled up with months worth of events, but of course with this unique year we have going on, um, we have just our one virtual meeting. But I think after today, we'll definitely put some more virtual meetings on there. We're gonna pop in our sales event coming up shortly now that we have everything finalized um, for that. So this is a place to check what's going on in, in the SoCal Hibiscus Society world and see more information. If you click on each event, it will give you more information. You should have like a photo spread and other things like that as well and tells you a little bit more about it. So just a good place to check up what's going on. There we go. All right, next up is our news section. And our news section is a really fun one. Um, that the first 
uh, area there, the educational articles, is actually really a cool resource point. We try to put on timely information for growers here in Southern California. So that way, if something seasonal or weather related happens here in Southern California, you're able to um, kind of get some help on what to expect and maybe not panic about what you're seeing on your plants. So you can see here, we have some timely articles that tell you about certain times of year, what things might be happening. So this one here about the yellow leaves in spring, I think has been one of the most helpful for people because we get every spring, tons of people panicking about, oh my gosh, my hibiscus are all getting yellow leaves. What did I do wrong? And actually that's what you're doing right. So articles like this can help guide you. And we'll be looking to add some more. Now that we're rolling into summer, we're gonna talk about some of the effects of uh, hot summer days and how you reduce your fertilizing and things like that. So that's gonna be an article you should be looking forward to probably next three weeks or so popping up on this uh, part of the website. So a good place to check out. Uh, Darren, okay. I just wanted to yeah. in that I was at your house earlier this week and you had not a single yellow leaf. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the, the the absolute truth there was not a single one but if you had seen my green trash bin it was filled to the top with yellow leaves <laughs> when you got time on your hands from covid this is what can happen pretty exciting all right next up is, on the news area is going to be our uh, auction and drawing plan so this is another fantastic page so when we have our meetings we list all of the plants that are going to be for sale for that particular meeting with photos descriptions so you can know ahead of time how much of your entire bank account you want to completely drain before you come to the meeting. So this is uh, how we uh, do great money extraction from our members, but it's worth it. Look at those blooms, they're just beautiful. So great place to always check out what's going on. Um, in fact, uh, we will be putting on here the plants for the plant sale coming up. Um, so we'll send out an email to all the members and you can come here and start planning out what plants you want to get and all that good stuff. Lastly is gonna be our, our news. And this one, we tend to try to find some uh, more interesting things from around the world of hibiscus for you to, to read about, learn about. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you come across any really cool articles uh, about hibiscus, please forward them to us and we can go ahead and we can put them on the website because we want everyone to read about them too. So. Some cool stuff. We haven't added anything here in a little while, but uh, again, if anyone finds anything, please uh, forward it to us and we'd be more than happy to throw it on here. All right, next up's our, one of our favorite sections, our payment section. Uh, we have built the website to really make it easy for you. And this part is great. You can pay both your membership and also any auction plants or plant sales here on our uh, website. It runs through PayPal, so all you have to have is a PayPal account, which I think at this point just about everyone has one. And uh, it's pretty much fill in the blanks and process it through, and you're all set to go. So, for those of you looking to back pay on your memberships to get more of the distribution plants, this is where you go. And in a couple of weeks, when we do our plant sale, this is where you're going to pay for your plants. So, lots of good stuff there. All right, moving on. This is my favorite section of website, and this is where we've worked really hard over the last uh, few years to improve our website. And that is going to be our how to grow, how to care, what to look for. Um, that's, that's what this whole section is about. So we have put in here what I think are your foundational needs that you need to take care of your hibiscus. And our goal here is that you as a grower get to not have to go down the same really tough learning curve that many of us had to go through like 10 years ago when there wasn't this kind of instruction or other growers you could talk to. So we've put all of our expertise and knowledge online for you to learn what we know, watch out for what we've learned to watch out for, and how to, I think most importantly, avoid making the same mistakes that we had to do the hard way, way back in the beginning. So if Rox could just show the different topics on there. So the golden rule, that's a great one to check out. That talks about how you need to know that what you see now in your hibiscus happened from inputs from two to three weeks ago on average. So if you see yellow leaves now, could be from hot heat wave you had two weeks ago. So things like that become a big difference as far as what could be causing problems in your hibiscus. Uh, the next area on the pro growers tips, if we can pop back up to the menu there, is gonna be care and growing. This is, I think, probably the most important section. 
uh, we have revamped this several times now and we have um, in the first part of the section all the things you got to look out for when it comes to growing your hibiscus so again the golden rule of growing hibiscus and if you go down a little bit you're going to see lots of other really important growing tips soil things that you take for granted that actually with hibiscus because they're so high maintenance make a huge difference so we got all kinds of really important things on there and this section is also fantastic for beginning beginners um a lot of people really when they first start growing hibiscus just kind of think they're like other flowering plants and as we learn growing them that's definitely not the case and another weird thing too that we've also learned is people that are really good growers with other flowering plants they struggle the worst with hibiscus plants because they assume that what goes on with the other flowering plants is the same for hibiscus and a lot of times that's not the case so for instance one of the biggest mistakes we see is whenever they see yellow leaves that look kind of pale they assume right away, oh, there's missing nutrients. It must need more iron or magnesium. And actually, that's your hibiscus plant telling you, no, there's no air in the soil, and I can't breathe, and you're overwatering me, and I'm going to get root rot and die soon. So these kind of things are really important, and we have it all on this section here for you, which is a great section. The next section on the Pro Growers Tips is the mistakes. And we wanted to put this on there because we see uh, definitely a pattern with people that make the same mistakes over and over again. And we wanna to try to break that cycle for people. So we've listed on there the common mistakes that we see and how to avoid them and what to look for. So this is another great page to help you out when you run into problems with your hibiscus. Um, and we talk all about the different factors that you need. And sometimes it's not what you do, it's, it's just having patience and trying to first figure out what's wrong. That's the most important part. Uh, the rest of the items on the Pro Growers Tips are specific to things that can happen to your hibiscus. And we tried to pick things that happen here in Southern California. So we don't have things on there like mealy bugs and other gall midge and things like that because we don't see those here in Southern California. So we just uh, chose some things that you're going to see here and then had a very well example with great photographs of what to look for what's gonna happen and what you're gonna to do to treat your plant properly so that you can get rid of whatever the ailment or pest might be. So look at that, see, look at that. That's a great white fly photo. Boy, if I had a lot of those this year. So if you had a lot of white flies this year, don't feel bad. I think this winter was what they loved and they've multiplied like crazy and I've, my clients have all got pretty good white fly infestations going on. Nothing we can't fix, so. Just take a visit here. If you guys ever get stuck, even after reading our website, don't hesitate to contact us anytime. We'll show you here on the website where to do that. All right, next section is propagation. This is a really fun section. Um, you think growing the hibiscus is a lot of fun? Just wait till you look at propagation from hybridizing to seed germination, rooting. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. There's so much you can learn and do. Uh, you'd be amazed how with some creativity you can do things uh, just in your garage or in your backyard. Uh, it's just a ton of fun. Um, so lots of great information here. I think the hybridizing section will really surprise you because there's a lot of strategy and a lot of thinking that can go into hybridizing the exotic hibiscus to get the outcomes you're looking for. So if you're a big fan of big splashy blooms, well, there's certain parents that might really help contribute to getting those kind of children. So lots of great information on here. And the other thing about this page I love is it links you to the International Hibiscus Society website. They have incredible search engines that, there they are, that let you look for any, con not just a certain variety, but you can do it by color, by size, by hybridizer. I mean, you can search in all sorts of ways here to find all kinds of great information. And you, what happens is, is, as you do your searches, you'll start to see that, oh, hey, there's patterns I can kind of pick up and follow. And certain hybridizers seem to get certain outcomes a lot. Why is that? You kind of start to see how the whole hybridizing world works and ticks. It's a lot of fun. So another great resource. You could spend hours in this area just checking all the information out. Um, I know I have, and, and I've learned a ton of things. So it's a lot of fun. Really, really interesting stuff. All right, hopping back to our website. Here we go. Next section is our photo galleries. And in the photo galleries, uh, pretty self-explanatory. We got our photos of the week. And we have uh, past meetings. So lots of, lots of little fun photo things you can check out. 
did you know that you can upload your photos to our website? Oh, look at that. Those are members' blooms. So something kind of fun. So just uh, there's a form at the bottom that you can use to fill out to upload your blooms. And then there it is. And then we can go ahead and add them on. So if you got a pretty bloom that you're really proud of, I know Malu has been on fire lately. I'm watching her Facebook posts and she's got like all these insane blooms every day now. So Malu, looking for some blooms on here. We good. So good job. Uh, yeah, so there's another great little uh, interactive measure on our website too. So check it out. A lot of fun photos and facts you can see on the blooms. Our next section we're working on is videos. And we have a really cool seed nicking video. This is Barry Schluter. He is a famous hybridizer. He passed away recently, uh, but he has a great four minute video on how to seed nick. So if you're ever gonna try to grow hibiscus from seed, he has the perfect quick video that shows you exactly what you need to do. He simplifies it. I refer to this quite often whenever I'm gonna grow things from seed. So great little video on there. Our second video we have is uh, Brad Daniels, one of our members. He shows you how to root prune. And what's cool about root pruning is, is that it's something that you wouldn't think about that has to be done, but actually when your plant gets too big and your pot's already really large, then that's something that uh, needs to be done. And you'd be amazed at how much it can help your plant out. So that's another great video to check out. There it is. And it's a little bit long, but it's worth it because Brad takes you step by step through what you got to do to root prune. And um, Boy, I tell you, on the International Hibiscus Society website, I get a lot of questions about people having their hibiscus in pots that they've outgrown and they can't upgrade the pot size anymore. So this really becomes a, a critical uh, function of growing hibiscus. Cool. Next up, meeting archives. So this is kind of a work in progress. We're going to be putting photos in from all of our past meetings. So we'll uh, work on that. Now that we've got some more time. Hopefully the yellow leaves are done on my property. I can get more into that. So we'll be working on that for you. And last here is our flower show information. So as we move forward and we expand our group activities, uh, we had our first flower show back in July at Dr. Curtis's home. We're looking to do that again in the future. So I've actually put on here all the information you need to know to how to work, pretty much participate in one of our flower shows. So we put it all on there, judging guidelines, how to uh, prep and transport your blooms. Everything you need to know is on there. So in the future, this would be a great place to look for uh, if we have another flower show once uh, hopefully the virus thing calms down. And finally is the contact area. And this is how you can contact us. Super duper easy. The form is ready for you. All you have to do is fill in the information. Look at those happy members. Oh, wow. The good old days. We'll be doing that again soon. So just fill out your information here and you can send us a message anytime. Uh, we probably get a message every week or so from this form. So we're, I'm always checking every day. So anytime you have a question, concern, uh, need, don't hesitate to contact us. You can also do that on our Facebook page too, or you can email us. Uh, and any way those three ways work great. So that's our website. I hope that it is something that you can use and we're always open to any suggestions you might have to improve it or add more content. Please don't hesitate to let us know how we can make it better. When we send out the survey to you um, later on this summer, there'll definitely be a section about the website too where you can go ahead and uh, give us your input. All right. <laughs> so with that, we're gonna talk about our member distribution announcements. So this is really exciting. This has been like five years in the making and what we have decided upon is we picked a variety for each year that all paying members are going to get. So we're going to actually contact each person that is owed a plant for each year by email. And that way they can go ahead and get their plants. Now we will be having the plant sale on Saturday, July 11th, and members can actually come there and pick up these plants if they want. So um, you expect to email this next coming week and then we can coordinate that. We have all these plants available and ready to go. We have quite a good volume of these varieties that we've chosen so we can cover all the members. And like I said earlier, um, if you already have one of these varieties, then we have some backups. As you can see down at the bottom, there's some examples of some of the varieties we have as a backup um, in case you already do have these, uh, these varieties. Uh, we chose varieties that are good growers, easy to grow, 
and have what we think are very pretty blooms and are reliable uh, bloomers. So you're getting the best of the best. And also some of these are super duper hard to get. So that's the whole goal is you want to get you something really special. Um, some of these plants are not available anywhere else. So pretty cool. Like Midnight Serenade, I love that one. And that's not for sale anywhere. And same with Victoria's Touch, another really pretty bloomer. And Soulmate is sold by Hidden Valley Hibiscus, but that one always sells out like within five minutes. So that's a really hard to get one too. Gosh, look at those colors. Okay, I got to stop. I'm starting to drool, sorry. All right, so get excited. Now, the good news about the um, distribution is if you want, you weren't a member before or you didn't pay during previous years, you can back pay and we'll go ahead and get you those plans too. So again, look where you just go, right here to this page and you can make payments electronically. It's so awesome. You make your life good. That's the whole goal of a Hibiscus Society. So you can make payments and then once we see a payment notification, you're good to get um, your plans. And look, we have a scannable, look, scannable QVC, is a QVC code. Look at that. I mean, Roxanne has got us going in the future here. This is really great. So a QR we're code. trying to cover yeah. all the angles <laughs> and not become antiquated like maybe some other plant societies. So uh, without <laughs> Roxanne, we probably would be. But yeah, so good stuff. So we have you covered. All right. So now our exotic hibiscus sale is going to be Saturday, July 11th. Um, this is going to be at Natal Nursery over in Tustin. It's pretty close to where Dr. Curtis lives, maybe about five minutes from his home. So if you've been to Dr. Curtis's home in the past for meetings, it's not too far from there. It's right off the 55 freeway and Catella. So we're gonna have our sale uh, on July 11th. I'm gonna be sending out an email to everyone, notifying them of the sale. We've already posted an announcement on Facebook, on our Facebook page. It's an event on there, so you can check it out. And we'll be uh, selling, we have, check this out, we have almost 600 plants that we are growing. So look at that. Okay, I'm gonna start drooling. That's some pretty cool stuff. So we got a lot of really great plants. Um, now that you got lots of time on your hands, if there's something here you see me like, you should be there. We'll be sending out a list with all the photos of the plants too on the email so you can all oh, look at that. There it is, there's a listing. So that's a lot of plants. So. We hope to see you there. Um, we'll be probably asking everyone to come with a mask on and keep their social distance. So just, uh, we'll have all the parameters and email how it's going to work. But we want you to uh, get excited. We've still got plants available for you and lots of things to keep you going this summer and into the fall. Um, and the plants are really in great shape. They're really full and pretty. They've all been rooted. Nothing's been grafted. So just their top of the line plants. So. Uh, we're really looking forward to the sale. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I wouldn't miss it, so I hope you won't either. All right. So that's going to do it for the main part of our virtual meeting, and we're going to open up any questions and answer uh, needs you might have at this point. So uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging in with me and being a good sport about our virtual meeting, and hopefully this is something we can do again soon in the future. Great, thanks, Darren. Um, mm -hmm. And great work on the the website. It's really, really come together. It's so fantastic. I know it's a lot of hard work, but uh, it looks awesome. Um, at this time, I'd uh, just like to open this up to just the Q and A forum. Um, if you'd like to uh, chime in, just unmute yourself um, because I'm opening it up, and you can go ahead and do that. I got a one gallon plant uh, last year at one of the meetings. When do I uh, push that up to a three gallon size? Repot it. Okay, so Connie, good question. Uh, what you want to do is if you're getting good growth on the plant and it, it's just really a matter of judgment when you have a one gallon plant. Uh, when you think it's going to need to pot up, I would do this. You want to very carefully slide the plant out of the pot and just check the roots. And okay. if you see the roots are starting to wrap around and they look like they need some more space, time the pot up. Simple as that. And I do that quite often with my smaller potted plants is you can just take them out of the pot very carefully. Make sure you don't do it in the sunlight because sunlight will kill the roots. 
but you can take it out of the pot and check it out. And a lot of times you'll see that, oh, yep, it's time to pot them up and you can go to three gallon. And it's good that you said three gallon because I usually jump to three gallon for my next size up. And that's a good size because it'll give the roots a lot of time and space to really grow and plan to get established. So uh, yeah, just pull it out. And if you see it looks like it's ready, do it in the shade and you're set. I have one other question. Uh, as far as the fertilizer, do you just take a handful and throw it in the pot or do you use one of those little cups like they use for bonsai and orchids? Yeah, so the fertilizer is really important with how much you're feeding your plants. Um, first question I would have to you is what fertilizer are you using? The one for hibiscus and palms. Okay, so if that's what you're using, um, definitely you want to make sure you know how much you're using because the, the trick that you're going to have to know down the road is depending on how hot it is, you might have to, or cold, you have to back off and how much fertilizer you're using. So it's good to know when it's normal conditions, like the weather we've been having this last week or two now, it's been kind of steady and normal. Right. That's going to be your baseline for how much you want to feed your hibiscus. So if all of a sudden we get a heat wave, the plant metabolism is going to speed up really quick and you're going to have to back off on the fertilizer because there's a potential for fertilizer burn. So it's helpful to know what your baseline is so that way going forward, you'll know you can start reducing what you normally feed them to avoid getting fertilizer burn. So, so maybe, maybe that little cup would be a better option. Yeah. So like what I do is that uh, some of the, the plant foods I get come with like these little measuring spoons that come inside of the fertilizer itself. Yeah. And they'll have like a hat, they'll have like a teaspoon, tablespoon. Uh, that's a good, something like that would be a good thing to do so you can know how much you normally feed them. And then when you got to start backing off, it's the same thing. In wintertime, you have to also start backing off because the, the, when it gets cold nights, un, anything under 50, the your hibiscus plant's metabolism is going to slow down. Right. And it's going to, and it's going to slow down on how much water and the nutrients it absorbs. So you have to also back off on the fertilizer too, because what can happen is if you keep on feeding the same amount of fertilizer during the winter time, but your plant's not pulling up as much water, that fertilizer going to soil can start to build up to really high concentrations. And you can get fertilizer burn in the winter time because now there's a concentration of it not being used in the soil. When the plant does pull up some water, it's gonna have too much fertilizer in it. So it's good to know that baseline from the normal weather patterns, like now's a good time to kind of get your baseline. And then that way you can measure what you're using. And the, the rule of thumb we use is when you're gonna reduce your fertilizer, do it by a quarter. So like if you have a heat wave, every five degrees hotter it gets, you're gonna reduce it by a quarter. And then for um, cold weather, it's every 10 degrees you reduce it by a quarter too. And then again, all this information is on our website. Hey, look okay. at that. Yeah, so it's all there. Thank you. Good question. How's everyone's hibiscus plants doing? Good. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How's your hibiscus plants? Sideways? <laughs> Malibu, just a couple things. A couple things. Just a couple oh, things <laughs> regarding the sale at the nursery. Uh, it is hello everybody, Alex. Uh, regarding the sale at the nursery, um, it is definitely uh, masks. All the employees wear masks, uh, including the people out in the field. But it is an open air nursery under the power lines, so it's not like you have to wear it the whole time. If you're 20 feet, 30 feet away, I'd, I'd be you'd be fine without the mask. Um, and they are well stocked with. Um, Soils, perlite, worm castings, all kinds of stuff. You do other plantings. Um, I'm sure, Norm, you know of the nursery. It's Nateo. It's, they've been there for since I was younger, when 12 years old. So um, anyway, I just want to let you know on that. Um, uh, that's it. Just want to let you know. Yeah, they've been there a long time. Yeah, yeah. I know. I knew the parents. And now, the, now the sons run it. Good people. So I'm making some masks. So the first stand will get a hibiscus mess <laughs> on July 11, okay? <laughs> All right. Hey, Malu, I want to ask yeah. you, uh, you're getting incredible bloom results. Is there any tips you want to share with us what you've been doing to have such success this year? No, just DLC. <laughs> 
Just okay. a lot of um, caring and talking to my plants. Yeah, I think I think all good growers learn over time yeah. that uh, to get great results, it really takes a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, high maintenance to make them happy. Yeah. Yeah. We're tired, but we're happy. <laughs> I know. That's the stress reliever, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. It is. Until we have our heat waves and then you walk outside a week later and they're all yellow leaves, but that's okay. We, we know yeah. what to expect. Yeah. Two, two buckets a day. <laughs> yeah. That sounds Of yellow familiar. leaves. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you use uh, foliar uh, feed very much? Uh, I do not. Um, the foliar feed, I've tried that many times in the past and I saw minimal results. So I still think the, the drench feeding with the roots is the way to go. Um, it all depends on the hibiscus are heat energy lovers. So depending on where you live, like if you're near the coastal zones, it's going to be a cooler, more mild climate, and you don't you'll need to use more fertilizer. Also, the same is true if you have a, a, a planter that's more shady and doesn't get as much sunlight and heat, then you want to use more fertilizer. Um, for the hotter spots, they don't need as much, so you can kind of vary it depending on what you see with your plants. But it, I know the foliar is a lot easier to use because you can spray it. But we, the, for instance, Hidden Valley has done some studies on and experiments on foliar spraying versus the drench spraying. And they definitely saw a significant difference using the drench spraying. I mean, drenching with fertilizer more than the foliar spraying, you get much better results. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you don't have the time or energy, uh, then do it. And it can't hurt. It can only help. Um, and again, keep in mind like how much heat a plant gets and where it's planted and that might help you figure out if foliar might be fine. If it's a nice hot spinning spot or if it's a, a cool spot, maybe it will need a drenching. Um, just remember also that the key nutrient that the hibiscus needs is potassium. So you got to make sure that whatever you decide to foliar spray with does have a lot of potassium in it. Most of the uh, fertilizers you see at uh, nurseries and uh, stores, uh, they're primarily more phosphorus uh, heavy and they're actually light on the potassium and that's because potassium is more expensive of an ingredient to put into the product. So it hurts their profit margin. So they like to put in phosphorus and nitrogen, which are cheap and they can make more money off of it. So um, as Connie had said earlier, she uses the hibiscus and palm fertilizer and palm fertilizers are similar in composition to what hibiscus needs. So those are a good substitute. I use the Hidden Valley Hibiscus Fertilizer, but it is a little bit pricey, so it's whatever you know suits your pocketbook best. Um, but you definitely want to make sure it's it's uh, potassium forward on the uh, MPK on the fertilizer. Good question. Oh, and you know what? Another good point too. If you're going to spray your plants, this could be for feeding. It, this could be for pests uh, or just cleaning them. Um, it's always a good idea to use um, horticultural oil. It's a good sticking agent and it will actually help clean up your leaves too. So I, whenever I spray my plants, I add horticultural oil to this, the mix and uh, it helps reduce evaporation. So stuff doesn't just go up in the air away from the plant when, it, uh, when it's still sunny or hot out. Um, it drowns pests and it helps clean up the leaves too. So horticultural oil is a great thing to mix in anytime you spray your plants. So I, I recommend it whenever you spray. How about a systemic? Uh, for your pests, for the yes. white slides and stuff. Yes, if you if you go on the website and you read our pages about the different pests and what to do, the end conclusion is always the same. You got to use a systemic. Um, when you spray the hibiscus, um, all you're going to do is kill whatever you can hit with the spray and whatever eggs you might hit. But all the things that you didn't spray are going to still hang around and and come back and do their nasty business. Uh, you'll see that white flies are the worst. Like you'll kill them all off in one spot in your hibiscus, and then the three weeks later, they're right back to that same spot again. They have great memory. They lay their eggs on all kinds of crazy surfaces, and they're really hard to get rid of. So systemic is the way to go because you're gonna have that in the plant sap, and once it's in the plant sap, whatever feeds on your plant's gonna get it and die. 
and that's key to breaking the egg laying cycle, which is the whole point. If you can't break the egg laying cycle of the pests, you're going to keep on seeing them pop up. Um, also, systemics are great because it's the least amount of work. You know, once once you put it in the soil and your plant absorbs it, it does the work for you. Whereas when you have to spray, you're always out there, you know, doing the physical labor, and that becomes very tiring. And then with hibiscus already being high maintenance, we last thing we need is something else to make us more tired, right? <laughs> Does anyone ever use banana peels on their plants? Oh, great question. I get that one a lot on the International Hibiscus Society page. Yeah. Um, yeah, so people like to use the banana peels because it has the high potassium in it. Right. But the, but the downside is that you put anything that decays in the soil that creates pathogens that can start root rot with your hibiscus roots. You have to remember, hibiscus roots are tender and fragile and they don't have um, the hardiness of maybe other plant species roots. So they're very susceptible to any kind of pathogens that get in the soil. And I've actually tried it myself and I've actually gotten plants that have gotten root rot from decaying matter in the soil. So we don't recommend it. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one to use, especially if the soil stays wet a lot. Um, that's a recipe for root rot because the pathogens from that decaying banana peel matter is going to start getting into the soil. I've actually even had bamboo stakes in the soil for like four or five years for certain plants and then the bamboo stakes start to rot and I actually got in my plants with root rot from the bamboo stakes so you'd be amazed how sensitive hibiscus roots can be to pathogens in the soil. So it's a good idea. It's nice that it's organic for the banana peels but at the same time um, it has a downside to it. So I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to give it a shot, just you got to use a, a small amount of it. Okay. Good question, though. A lot of people ask that one. They're really good for staghorn ferns. Yes, yeah. that's where I use mine. Yeah. yeah. That's what I use. One, one, one thing to back up on is the systemics. And uh, I always just do it just because, out of courtesy of anybody that doesn't use systemics. Um, make sure that you're not applying it near anything edible because I mean I know Norm knows I know Bill knows but some people that don't garden a lot you don't want to apply it near anything edible because then you'll be eating the systemic yeah. which is not good for you not really long term I don't have many blue any I don't have much of anything blooming right now I don't know what's happening but I'm usually a late bloomer in so many things. We won't go into that. <laughs> um, all of my, I am a late bloomer just because I think because of my microclimate. So my large old hibiscus trees are blooming slightly, but it's just all beginning to start. Like my plumeria are just starting to bloom and I belong to other Facebook groups. And I'm like, I hate these people. <laughs> Everybody's showing flowers, and I'm like, great, I'm so happy for you. Can I do a drive-by and fill your glance? Um, but I think it's important for people to understand that, you know, your garden's on a cycle. When it comes, it comes. I don't get upset anymore. When I was younger, I used to get upset. I don't get upset about much of anything. I think a lot of people, though, like you were saying there, and a lot of people start, well, my stuff isn't blooming. I got to fertilize a lot more, and then it's like, why is everything dead? Uh -huh. Well, because you over fertilize. Right. And you know, this is where I really miss having the meetings at a location, because I wish you could all come to my house right now. I don't have much blooms at all. And it's been this way now for about well, three weeks. Well, when you Well, when you have 300 plants, you'll find some blooms here and there. <laughs> you have less blooms than I do right now. I have more blooms than you, which is funny. Yeah, and, and that goes to show what Bill was saying about the climates. Every microclimate has its own, you know, unique characteristics. And where you live out in Tustin, it's a little bit warmer, and the plants love it. So, yeah. I also tell people that the gardening is a competitive sport. <laughs> hey, Darren, uh, on some of the meetings, what some people have done is they've gone with their iPhone and went in their yard during the meeting and showed pictures of their plants. So that's on that's on our agenda we're, we're going to be looking to do virtual tours on the next few uh, meetings we have online so get ready all right this is our this is our field run you guys need help on the 11th 
like hands to help organize if, if you want to it's gonna be me roxanne and darren so far if you feel like it no i just think it would be you know fun i'm used to organizing events and stuff so i'll drop you a text yeah no worries thank you Great. and Nor norm if you want me to remove that trunk for you i'll trade some of your plants for the labor <laughs> If you, want to take, if you have so you want to take much that uh, trunk out, you're more than welcome. My wife. Oh, I can get any trunk out you need. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I but, just. But I'm going to go to your sale and support it because uh, I'm thinking about putting some hibiscus all over the place now. Good. Right. Thank you. I just want to know where Alex is going to put more plants. Where is it exactly you're going to put these? I always have room. I just take stuff out and put stuff in. The poor children that are being taken out. I take them and I give them to people. So it's, you know, it's recycling. Bill, uh, Bill to your point, um, also my, my garden is slow to take off. Um, for example, I have only one plumeria that's blooming, but I see a lot of inflows coming. Yeah. And I just think it's the coastal, you know, climate that we have that has us later than everybody else. It's because so, we're so late now. Uh, and don't forget also we had winter all the way up until about easter this year so that was very late for southern california so we're really like two months behind where we should be which is kind of similar to what happened last year when we had that really cold spring so i'm having plants now still just waking up and it's almost july which is i've never had that happen before so you just gotta be patient well with you know these plants are all dictated by the weather so they're two months behind and you just have to get, you know, every year it's a different ball game as far as when they decide to do what. So, you know, but down the road, you might have a really nice fall and they might bloom way into winter and you kind of make up for it. So you just cross your fingers that that is the case. So don't get too frustrated. You don't see much blooms because I don't have much either right now. And it's, it's a lot of green and that's it. So just be patient. That's the key to growing these guys is lots of patience all the time. It's the key to gardening. Yeah. And marriage. <laughs> there are a lot more keys to marriage, trust me. This meeting has gone way beyond hibiscus. I'm impressed. <laughs> hey, Darren, you're going to find using Zoom that your number of members joining in will start growing each meeting. Yeah, I, I expect that. Another thing that you might be interested in is, is I gave a program on Zoom for the International Fern Society, and we sent out information all over. We didn't limit it to our club members, and we had three people from Australia go into our meeting. And our meeting started on Friday at 7.30, and we asked them, what time is it in Australia? And it was like 12 noon the next day. So yes. They participated. That's awesome. And the other thing too that you might consider with all the other societies, because we've been doing this, is that societies uh, like the Bromillage Society on the East Coast did a program for us on the West Coast. So there's a lot of speakers that would you know, cost a fortune to bring out here, but you can have on Zoom. I love the possibilities. It's amazing what you can do these days. Yeah. This was our trial run virtual meeting, so the next one we'll, we'll definitely look at incorporating hopefully some more people in it, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see where it takes us. Well, I think, like, in the beginning of this, we were on so many Zoom meetings, it was ridiculous. And, and if you follow the statistics on Zoom, they have really taken a lot. So people are Zooming out. So I think as this continues and it continues to... I think the virus is going to be a lot extended than we think. I think there will be a lot of traffic back to Zoom meetings. I agree. Roxanne, did you, did you purchase the pro or the business subscription? Uh, Darren got the subscription, and I think, uh, what did you do, Darren? Was it it's the one for $150, which is like the next step up from having the freebie. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's business or pro. I think it's pro. The pro, you can have 100 participants. The yeah. other one, you can have, you, you took the 100. I took the 100, yeah. Okay. Which we might have to upgrade if we, that'd be pretty cool. Get past 100 people, that'd be amazing. Yeah.
Well, you know, if, if you open it up worldwide, that could happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, then, and then, Aaron, you, you just need to have another level of, of membership for online only access, right? So you can do a $10 online access. So you can. Yeah, we have that. We have the $10 for the non Southern California residents so they can, they can pay and beyond, See? which is a great way to okay. get more revenue. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> no. um, this is more office type stuff, I guess. And it's the website schsgoogle.com. I, I don't know how to get in. So there's already a website before we started ours with SCHS, so we couldn't take that. So just Google SoCal Hibiscus Society and it should pop it up. It does. Yeah, I just, yeah. Sorry, got that. Okay. Um, that good question. Okay. <laughs> We're, I'm new. We have a brand new computer and all kinds of stuff. And um, to pay our membership, is there a place to a mail a check maybe? Because I uh, don't know if we have. Easy. It's so easy to do it online, Susan. Well, might be for you. <laughs> We're dinosaurs, Connie, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess we could, you can send it to myself or I can ask our treasurer, George, if you can send it directly to him. Normally what we do is we just have you pay by check or cash at the meetings. Um, if you guys want to stop by the plant sale on July 11th, you can do that there too, if you want. Okay, for two people, it's how much? Uh, for family, it's 50. 50? Yeah. Okay. Good. But if you want to mail it, let me know, and uh, I, I can just give you my address. You can send it to me. And how do we find? <laughs> just, uh, you can, again, use the contact form. You can email us or go on, on Facebook, and uh, I, can, I can get you that way. I don't see an address on this, so. It is. Hmm? Okay, if you know how to do it, you do it. <laughs> Passing the buck here. Yeah, just just message one of us, and we'll give you one of our addresses, and we'll get it to where it needs to go. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Great questions. All right. We're at the top of the hour or at 12.03 uh, and I thought it was a really great meeting. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on how it went, uh, what you'd like to see. Norm, also great additional information about what other societies are doing and, you know, the prospects of being able to open it up to um, so many people from different uh, locations and having guest speakers. I had been thinking about that as well. Um, this was our first foray, so we wanted to test it out. Um, so we really appreciate you guys dialing in and joining and uh, really engaging with us in this um, platform. So I wanted to thank you guys. I'm glad thank you Connie so much. Got that on. was great. Uh, I appreciate it. Connie about getting Zoom for another club, an orchid club. So. Yeah, that, that's, we're going to have to do that for our Long Beach uh, Amateur Orchid Society just to keep everyone engaged somehow. And, um, and we have a, an, older, an older age group in that club, so I'm hoping that uh, somehow, some way, we can make it easy enough for them to participate. Hey, Connie, let me know if you have questions, but I was doing some research and there's a great uh, informational video. I know Norm has already done a tutorial, but they can watch that video on YouTube beforehand as you okay. guys set up. But if you want to reach out to me, feel free to. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. They might also be more comfortable using the cell phone app because they're only looking at one person. Uh -huh. I think a lot of times with, if there's like 30 people on the call, it's like, Who's talking? What are they saying? So, but it's also just a good opportunity for them to kind of lift themselves up a little bit yeah. and catch up and be brave and not be frightened of technology as I am. Um, so um, for me, I just, you know, have my husband be the IT department. Yeah, yeah. And oh, my, my think, <laughs> yeah, and I think if, if we give them enough um, how to data then then maybe they'll feel like i can do this yeah the app on the phone is super easy i have that and 
it's not a science project. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially for joining. Obviously, for moderating, it's much more difficult on a mobile okay. device. Um, but when I moderate, I choose to be on a PC. But for other people that just want to participate and listen, um, mobile device is actually perfect. You can ask Alex. He's on his iPhone this whole time. So. Um, yeah, that's truck. what I thought. Yeah. My seat belt in my truck. Yeah. Um, and how did you do? How did you do the background, Alex? Uh, options. You click on the screen. You go to more, and then you could change your background. Oh, got it. Okay, nice. Yeah, my wife uses Jason Momoa as her background. <laughs> okay, only only certain people are going to know who that is. Um, <laughs> hey, at this time, I um, I'm going to stop the recording, and we wanted uh, Darren and I had talked about just if folks want to stay on and have more questions or offline conversations, um, we're happy to keep it open. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, does anybody have any? other thoughts before I stop the recording. I do have one question. Uh, you're allowed to record this. Are you doing that? I am. And so you're storing it somewhere on your website? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll take the recording and I think we're going to either put it up on YouTube or we're going to put it on the website. One or the okay. other. Okay. Thank you so much. This was yeah. great. I appreciate it.